Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Ashraf Ben Alaya. I'm a Microsoft MVP, also a Microsoft Certified Trainer, and I am thrilled to introduce you to my brand new series, Azure Workshops. In this series, we will deep dive into the world of Microsoft Azure, exploring key components such as virtual machines, SQL Server, VPN Gateway, private endpoints, public and private application gateways, and much more. So whether you are an IT professional looking to expand your cloud knowledge, a developer eager to leverage Azure for your application, or a beginner just starting your journey into cloud computing, this series is for you. And today, in our first video, we are kicking things off with an essential foundation creating a virtual machine in Azure. I will walk you through the entire process step by step and show you how to connect that virtual machine to an SQL server. By the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of setting up and connecting these fundamentals Azure services. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you don't miss any future workshops. Your support helps me create more content like this and I appreciate every single one of you who joins me on this cloud journey. All right, let's get this started with creating our first Azure virtual machine and connecting to it to SQL Server. Now, the first thing that we are going to do is actually creating our first virtual machine. For that, we need to create a resource group if we don't have one. So let me rename or name our uh, resource group with RGPOC FR001. And let me place this in France central region. All right, now we will be creating this resource group. I will be creating uh, 002 because I already have a resource group that is 001. And right now, in the marketplace, I will look for the category computing and I will be choosing a virtual machine. So, for each resource in Azure, we need to have a resource group. And let me give a name for my virtual machine. I will keep it simple. And we don't need to have a built option. And I will choose um, a Windows Server 2019 data center. So as you can see in the marketplace, we have a lot of images that are already uh, prepared for us. We need only to choose the right image. And for the size of the virtual machine, I will keep it simple. I will choose something that will not cost me a lot and it will go with this demonstration. For that, let me go with D2 uh, ES V4, all right, with a uh, two CPU and eight gigabyte RIMs. And let me set up a username and password. Cool. Let me type this password. Great. All right. And I will keep the inbound port uh, open right now for the port 3389 for the RDP remote desktop protocol. And uh, for the OS disk, I will go with the standard SSD uh, I'm not in production, so I don't need premium. And we need for a virtual machine in order to be connected to uh, some resources or other resources or to the internet, we need to create a virtual network. So I'll create a new virtual network and I will write uh, uh, also a new subnet. So I'll name it subnet uh, 001, which will be the subnet for our um, virtual machine or that will contain our virtual machine and I will create a public IP address. So this is actually not a right practice to have a virtual machine exposed with a public IP address. And in the further videos, we will see how to uh, disassociate or get rid of this public IP address. So for the next part, so I will just go next, next, and I will click on create and the creation of our virtual machine just started. Meanwhile, 
as I said, we are going to try to connect uh, to SQL Server. For that, we need to create a SQL Server and a database. So I don't have any server in that resource group. I will need to create a new database. And of course, if we need to create a database, we have uh, we must have um, a server for that database. So I will create a new server for the demo. I will name it SQL POC. Uh, the uh, fr002 uh, and i will put it in the same region and for the authentication i will use both sql and microsoft authentication microsoft enter id so which uh, was um as your active directory so let me set up the server admin login and password and i will choose my uh, uh, user as the uh, microsoft enter authentication all right, cool. Everything seems great. And we are inside the uh, development environment. I will choose um, configuration, a simple configuration for our compute storage for this uh, SQL database and this server. And I will allow access to this uh, SQL database and server to public. And I will activate a sample for like that Microsoft will create a sample database that contains some data so later we can see it inside the database. All right, I launched the deployment and I will wait for a few seconds and we will see our uh, SQL database and server have been created. Cool. Meanwhile, let's see if the virtual machine have been created or not. As you can see, we have one deployment and one that is have been uh, succeeded. And as you can see, we have the network interface, the virtual network, virtual machine, and the public IP have been created. Cool. That means we can actually connect to our virtual machine. So let me click on connect and download the RDP file. Click on open and connect. And right now we only need to type the password that we have uh, identified when we have created this resource all right so this is the first session it will be a bit uh, slow we will wait and right now we are inside our virtual machine yes all right so in order to connect to a SQL database, we are going to download uh, SSMS, uh, which is a SQL management tool that will let us uh, connect to any SQL database. So this is the first step that we will do inside this virtual machine is to go to the website of Microsoft and download this tool. So I am right now inside this virtual machine. Let me go to um, Microsoft Edge and look for this tool. All right. And right now let's type SSMS. Uh, we need to configure this only the first time. Continue and confirm. All right. Let me look for the tool. So SQL Server Management Studio. Let me go. And this is the MS Learn uh, page where we can find this setup. The download SQL Server Management Studio and, and in one second we will install it. Meanwhile, we have SQL Server and SQL Database are being uh, created inside Azure. Cool, I have launched the installation. All right, we here, let me go back to the resource group and refresh. And as you can see, deployment to succeeded. And right now we have our SQL database and our SQL server. And as you can see here, we have the networking part inside our SQL server. And here, uh, the I have set selected network and I will uh, let anything that exists inside our subnet uh, that we have created um, with that virtual network, anything that is existing in that subnet will be able to connect 
to this um, SQL database or server uh, if they have the uh, username and password. So we, I will allow that. For best practice, it will be using the private access using the private endpoint and we will see this in another video. Okay, I will just wait a few seconds. All right here we have uh, I need to refresh just the page because we need to enable some service on the subnet and I have already launched that twice all right and right now we are allowing uh, the subnet 001 that have um, the address prefix uh, 10.0.0.0 uh, on base 24, uh, any IP ad private IP address in that range will be able to access to this SQL server. All right, as you can see, the state is ready right now. And since we have the virtual machine on the same subnet, we will be able to access to that um, that database or server. So let me go to uh, show you first that subnet. So here our first subnet, later we will have a lot because we are going to continue with this workshop. And here I'm launching the installation inside the virtual machine of the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. So this is our subnet and this is our virtual machine. And here uh, we have our database. And actually I can access to that database from the portal uh, if I allow my public IP address to access that database. Of course, I'm not using private endpoint, so it's like a public uh, access, which is uh, always not a bad, uh, good practice. And here inside networking, when we select networks, here we can add public IP address. So if we select disable, we'll be, we will need to use private access using private endpoint. But in this case, we are having public IPs. And right now I will uh, try to connect with the server login and password that I have created. And as you can see, I am able to go and see the tables, the views and everything inside that server. Cool. And right now let's go to um let me go back to the server networking and here let me uh, i can see that i have my ip address i will just refresh the page okay and here let me go back to the query editor i need to refresh the page one more time All right, here we have our uh, SQL database. All right, uh, let me check maybe the virtual machine if the installation have done. All right, the setup have completed. Great, right now, if you go to the tools and we can see the SQL Server Management Studio and we need uh, two information. We need to uh, get the connection string from the portal and we need to have the username and the password in order to connect to that SQL database. So if we go to the, that SQL database, let me go to that SQL database and look for that connection string. Here we have the connection string that we are going to need in order to connect. Let me take this part. All right, and here inside the SQL uh, Management Studio, let me just uh, choose SQL Server Authentication, type the login and password, and now we will be able to connect to that database from the, um, the virtual machine, as you can see. So here we have the default database and the default tables, which actually the sample that we have chosen to, um, to have while we have created this database and you can see we have the different databases here and if we do disconnect and 
we go back to um, networking and right now if I delete this all right so I deleted the access from that um, subnet and I will try uh, one more time to try to access I will not be able to do that as you can see we will have this error that uh, I will uh, I'm not allowed to access to that database because uh, that uh, subnet uh, or inside that virtual network is not allowed to access the SQL server I will try to allow it again and try to connect all right now it's have been successfully updated and let me go back and click connect and as you can see now I can connect to that database this is not bad actually this is the first steps to connect to a database from or inside a virtual machine later we will try to have a better practice uh, by not allowing uh, these virtual networks or public firewall um, rules to access to that database because this is actually not secure i hope this was helpful and let's see later how to disable the access from uh, the sql server and how to access it using private endpoints and what is private endpoints thank you